story recapped here. Today I'm gonna explain a horror movie called Ghost Ship. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1962, the Italian ocean liner Antonia Graza makes its voyage across the Atlantic Ocean while carrying some renowned guests. The people enjoy the lavish party, and they dance to a slow song while a beautiful songstress performs on stage. However, a little girl named Katie doesn't seem to appreciate the event, so she quietly sits in a corner with her wooden puzzle until the chief steward asks her to dance. Meanwhile, in the engine control room, an unknown known person lifts a lever, releasing a wire cord from a spool, which later snaps across the dance floor quickly. Suddenly, everyone falls quiet, and the place is now filled with decapitated and dismembered bodies. It turns out that everyone except for Katie has been bisected by the wires. As she stands in shock, the little girl witnesses the steward's head fall out of his body, which causes her to scream in horror. Forty years later, a salvage crew that consists of Captain Sean Murphy, Maureen Epps, Greer, Dodge, Munder, and Santa gets introduced into the story. One day, they successfully salvage a huge ship despite the low chances of actually pulling it off. And after they make money out of it, they celebrate their small victory in a bar. While they enjoy their time, a weather service pilot named Jack Ferryman approaches Captain Murphy and introduces a job offer. He later tells the crew that he spotted a vessel adrift in the Bering Sea, and he wants to split the cash if they successfully bring it to port. After careful deliberation, the crew agrees, and they take Jack along along with them on the Arctic Warrior, their salvage tug. Later that night, they sail to find the vessel, but it rains so hard that they can barely see anything, and it doesn't help that their ship's radar is glitching. Because of this, they crash into what they're looking for, which turns out to be the Antonia Graza, an Italian ocean liner that went missing in 1962. They immediately get to work, and Epps, Munder, and Dodge accompany Murphy in exploring the vessel. Meanwhile, Jack and Greer stay in the Arctic Warrior to keep track of everything from below. As the rest of the crew explores, some creepy things happen, like how Greer loses the signal to the radio and a wooden puzzle moving on its own. However, despite all of these ominous events, the crew finds a door leading to the bridge. But as soon as Munder sets foot on the rusty floor, it breaks apart, and he falls right through it. Luckily, Epps manages to catch him on time. But as she holds on to Munder, she spots a little girl staring at her from below. Later on, Munder gets brought to safety, while Epps shrugs off what she saw and proceeds to accompany the crew to the bridge, where they discover that the vessel's controls are not functional. As they rummage through the bridge, Dodge discovers a digital watch, which would suggest that they're not the first ones to board the ship. Because of this, Murphy tells the crew to take a break and prepare to tow the ship at dawn. Later on, everyone gets back to the Arctic Warrior, and Murphy sits down to talk about Antonio. Graza's similarity to the Mary Celeste. Two months after it set sail, the Mary Celeste was seen near the Azores Island in the Atlantic Ocean, with its stores and supplies untouched. However, there wasn't a soul on board, and the ship didn't have any signs of distress. Jack seems astonished by the story, and so he suggests that the Mary Celeste is a ghost ship, but Dodge butts in to say that it's rubbish. Meanwhile, Epp stands outside and thinks of the little girl, when Jack suddenly appears to give her a jacket and a cigarette. He then asks her why she fell quiet after getting back from the ship, and so she tells him about what she saw. However, Jack reassures her that he sees things when he flies for long hours too, and because of this, Epps feels relieved and goes to sleep. The next day, the crew fails to tow the Antonia Graza because of the massive hole they found on its hull. For this reason, they allot three days to fix it before they proceed in towing it to the port. Later on, the crew members are given specific tasks, and they pair up to perform them. Murphy goes with Greer, Munder with Dodge, and Epps with Jack, while Santos stays on their tugboat to prepare the engine for towing. Throughout their activity, Epps wanders off and finds a drained pool with bullet shots around it. This scene seems peculiar, but as she eventually decides to leave, the little girl appears in front of her again, causing Epps to fall. The impact causes her head to bleed, but as she gets up, the pool absorbs her blood as she gets up. Unbeknownst to Epps, the rest of the crew is having supernatural experiences too. In the captain's cabin, Murphy finds a reflection of an old man and staring at him through the mirror, while Greer hears an eerie singing in the distance. Back at the pool, Jack finds Epps and helps her up, but as they leave the place, they fail to witness the blood oozing out of the bullet holes. They later get to the laundry room, where they find a few waterlogged corpses. Horrified by this display, Epps desperately makes their way to the entrance and finds that it's now locked. 
For some unknown reason, doors start to open themselves, making it seem like the ship is guiding Epps and Jack on where it wants them to go. Meanwhile, Greer finds a recently lit cigarette and fails to see that a woman in red is observing him on the other side of the room. Despite all the horrific scenes they just witnessed, Jack giddily stops by a room that holds a rusty Jaguar XK-150, but Epps reminds him to resume their agenda. However, Epps notices an unusual movement under a pile of mailbags, but as she kicks it open, she finds a pile of gold bars. Mars. This riveting discovery pushes her to find Murphy and the others, but as she and Jack proceed to do so, a ghostly voice calls out to her on the radio. However, Epps pays this no heed, and soon after, they find a mysterious freezer room. Despite Jack's warning, Epps walks in, and to her horror, Munder and Dodge jump out to scare her. Unfortunately for the two men, Epps is not in the mood for goofing around after seeing the rotting bodies in the laundry room. Not long after, the rest of the crew head to where Jack and Epps found the gold bars, and true enough, they manage to find more of it. Everyone shouts in glee, but Greer thinks it's strange that something so valuable is that easy to find, so he tells everyone that there's something suspicious about the ship. However, the crew is already consumed by the thought of becoming millionaires, so they disregard Greer's warning, even with his report of hearing a woman singing. Later on, everyone decides to leave the ship behind and bring the gold with them. However, before they could accomplish their plans, a tank of propane mysteriously leaks, and if the engine produces heat, it'll blow the entire Arctic warrior into smithereens. However, the little girl foresees this and tries to warn Epps and the crew, but another ghost takes her down and fails to save everyone. In a split second, the tugboat explodes with Santos, Greer, and Munder inside it. Epps immediately dives into the water to save her friends, and together with Jack, everyone gets rescued. However, Santos wasn't rescued because he was in the engine room where the explosion originated. After everyone gets brought to safety, bickering starts to arise, and they start to get upset for various reasons. Later on, Epps tries to comfort Murphy, who thinks Santo's death is on him, but he walks away from her instead. Because of this, Epps steps up and tells the whole crew that they should keep the boat floating until help comes, meaning they should fix any damages that'll cause it to sink. However, Greer suggests that they should build a raft instead, but Munder thinks of this as a stupid idea. Because of the accumulated fear, grief, and worry, Greer gets offended and punches Munder in the face. Later on, Epps searches the ship's manifest and discovers that the little girl's name is Katie. With her newfound knowledge, she summons her name, and the doors in the hallway immediately close themselves shut. Eventually, another door opens, and Epps walks inside to find Katie's toys and drawings. But when the closet opens, she finds the little girl's body as well. Meanwhile, Munder and Dodge raid the kitchen and eventually find a big can of beans, which is surprisingly not spoiled after 40 years. Because of this, they eat to their heart's content and talk about what they're going to buy once they get back on the mainland. However, However, their chit-chat distracts them from noticing that they're already eating worms. Eventually, the two men catch on with what they're munching on and squirm in disgust. Meanwhile, Greer drowns his sorrow with a bottle of booze and finds himself in a ballroom with floating tables and chairs. Not long after, the room puts itself back together, and people appear around him, including Francesca, the woman who was observing him earlier. She soon approaches Greer and kisses him on the cheek to seduce him. At first, thoughts of his fiancée pop into his head, but he later realizes that the situation isn't real, so it wouldn't hurt to get it on with Francesca. Shortly after, they decide to take it to the next level, and Francesca takes off her clothes. However, as Greer walks closer, he phases through her and falls to his death. Meanwhile, Murphy is at the captain's lounge and sees the ghost of Antonia Graza's captain himself. The captain later reveals pictures of a ship they rescued two days before the Antonia Graza disappeared, which originally owns the gold. Murphy immediately identifies the ship as the Lorelei, and according to to the tales, no survivors were found here. However, the captain shakes his head and shows Murphy a photo of its sole survivor, and he could hardly believe who it was. Because of his discovery, Murphy tries to gather up his crew, but he gets confronted by the ghost of Santos, who is incredibly bitter about his death. Meanwhile, Epps meets Katie and discovers that all the ghosts in the ship are trapped due to an evil entity who is trying to reach his quota of souls, and when it gets fulfilled, they'll get ferried to a particular location. However, Katie's revelations are halted when blood starts to cover the ceiling. This scene scares the little girl, and she soon disappears from Epps' sight. After this, Epps finds Murphy, who now thinks she's Santos. For this reason, he attacks her, but 
Jack walks in to knock him out before he kills Epps. Later on, they put him in an aquarium until they find a solution on how to leave the ship. They soon link up with Dodge and Munder. And finally, everyone starts to acknowledge the existence of supernatural entities on board. The next day, Epps observes Murphy in the aquarium while the three men arrive to report that they couldn't find Greer. Because of this, Epps tells everyone to stick to the plans and start fixing the ship. Later on, she dives into the engine room with Munder and Dodge, and they manage to fix the hull and get the ship working. However, as Epps moves to the bridge to steer, she notices that the current is carrying them towards some big rocks, so she tells Dodge and Munder to take control of the drift while she finds Greer again. Unfortunately, she finds Greer's bloody corpse and Katie, who stares blankly at her. While Epps is gone, the two men notice a clog in the second pipe, so Munder ends up diving down to massage it loose. Meanwhile, Epps merges her mind with Katie and gets taken to the night where she sees the kitchen staff putting poison on the food while everyone else gets bisected on the dance floor. Soon after, everybody gets killed through various methods. Then, they turn on each other when it comes to dividing the gold. The last man standing is killed by Francesca, but she also gets killed by the mastermind behind the massacre, Lorelai's sole survivor, Jack Ferryman. Sensing that something is wrong, Epps immediately runs back to check on Murphy, only to find his floating corpse. She then goes to the bridge to report this to Dodge, but Jack walks in shortly after. With her latest discovery about Jack's true identity, Epps plays it cool and tells the two men to stick together while she gets Munder. However, back in the engine room, Munder gets crushed under the ship's gears, and when Epps arrives, she can already tell what happened after seeing the blood red water. Meanwhile, Jack reveals his true self by insulting Dodge's masculinity. In response, Dodge shoots him with a gun before he tries to leave the bridge. But unbeknownst to Dodge, Jack is still alive. Back in the control room, Epps sets up some explosives so that she can blow up the whole ship. But when Dodge finds out about this, he gets upset by it. Later on, Epps grows suspicious because he hasn't asked about Munder. Therefore, he reveals his true self. He is actually Jack, who took the form of Dodge after killing him. Jack later explains that he's a demonic spirit that collects souls, and when he gets the desired amount, he'll ferry them to the depths of hell. Soon after, he offers to spare her if she leaves the boat alone, but Epps refuses. So Jack hits her head with a beam, causing her to fall into the water. He then jumps into the water to drown her, but Epps finds a crossbow which he uses to shoot the detonator. Suddenly, the whole ship blows up, and the souls are set free. Then, Katie guides Epps through the wreckage, and Katie later drifts to the afterlife along with the other souls. Later on, Epps emerges from the water and observes the Antonia Graza finally meeting its end. Left with no choice, she holds on to a floating trunk until she's picked up by a passing vessel, taking her to the mainland for treatment. Later on, she gets loaded into an ambulance and notices some people carrying the crates of gold into another ship. To her horror, Jack appears, who seemingly survived the explosion unscathed. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like, it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.